the guy, Justine, and today we're doing an Ask IJ episode, which is short for I Justine, if you're new here. I asked you guys on Twitter and on Instagram to ask me some questions, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna answer these, and I feel like most of the questions that I got were all about the new iPhone. What do I think about the new iPhone 8? What are the latest iPhone 8 rumors? What do I think of the leaked designs? And truthfully, at this point, I've kind of stopped looking at the rumors because it's all just sort of a bunch of just nonsense. It's all recirculated old rumors that I feel like that have just been beat to death. It's gonna be a full OLED screen. There's gonna be a touch sensor on the back. No, just kidding, it's now on the front. I can't quite keep up. And until there's something new and actual crazy hard evidence, I'm just gonna kind of take a step back, maybe two steps back, until we get some evidence. I need more than these fake Photoshop images. And most of the stuff that I've been seeing, it's all looking like not good news. For example, Apple has just weeks to solve the iPhone 8 Touch ID dilemma. There's been a bunch of reports that Apple is having trouble trying to get the Touch ID to work on the full OLED screen, and that was one of the big issues that Samsung was also having, which is why they ended up having their fingerprint sensor on the back. Who knows? We don't know. These are all rumors. I need truth. I don't want any more lies in my life. Cut them out. Speaking of rumors, I say this, but yet <laughs> I'm still reading it. This is something that I thought was actually super interesting. iPhone 8 may feature rear-facing 3D laser for improved autofocus and AR. You guys may remember that Apple announced their AR kit, which I've seen so many various demos of, and it looks super cool. Augmented reality is one of my favorite things. Now I like VR, but VR I feel like takes you out of your element. I like taking what you already have and improving it, yet adding this other crazy layer that otherwise would not be possible if it wasn't for AR. So augmented reality, huge fan, super excited to see what Apple does with that. So that definitely would make sense with this 3D laser. To be able to get a sense of your room and your surroundings and be able to accurately portray whatever it is that that AR kit will be able to do. I'm excited. iPhone 8 will come in four colors. What? Including a new mirror-like exterior. And here's the thing, you know, I was super excited about having that jet black iPhone, but I have a case on it. I have to have a case on it. It's I drop it and I have a case on it. It's such a slick surface that it's so hard to hold on to. But this looks cool. Although that's just a case. We get the point. There's also been some rumors about some things not actually being ready for launch. So there was a poll that I saw that said, would you rather the phone launch without these features activated and then later be activated or have the phone be delayed? I'd rather have the phone and then those features come later. There's been other reports of people saying that they're also having trouble with wireless charging. I don't know. I don't really know what to believe. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I look forward to reading those. But I guess we'll just move on to our next question because there were just so many questions that you guys had about the iPhone 8. And really the only thing I can say is I'm just waiting for the truth. Logan wants to know how many pets I've had in my life. I've had a lot of pets in my life. Maddie is my first dog that is my very own that I have 100%, well, 50% pretty much control over because my sister has him almost just as much as I do. But it's pretty much our dog. It's our baby. Growing up, we had dogs. Dogs, we had cats, we had hamsters, we had guinea pigs, but my mom and dad did all the work pretty much. I mean, I would sometimes feed the dog. We also had chickens. I at times would have to go feed the chickens, give them some scraps of food, pick the eggs, sometimes feed the cats. But overall, like my parents did everything and I had no concept until these past two years of how hard it is to raise an animal. And they raised three children plus animals. Just a lot of stuff. I still, to this day, don't know how my parents have done all of the things that they did for us. It still is by far the most impressive thing ever. So mom, dad, thank you. Also my grandparents, I mean, they always watched us too. So man, just, I, I can barely handle myself. First asking if I'd marry the dancing hot dog. I definitely would. This stupid hot dog meme. I mean, is it, is it a meme at this point? It's a Snapchat filter, but it's this dancing hot dog. The first time I saw it, I was like, this is hilarious. I'm so amused. I'm still slightly amused a week later. I don't think you guys are, or my sister. She's very sick of the hot dog, but I still think it's funny. I'm still quite amused. Speaking of my sister, she is asking me, what do you think about me? Uh, I think you're great. You're fantastic and you're extremely sassy. And what were we listening to the other day in the car? We were actually listening to an audiobook on Audible. It's pretty much the only thing that I do listen to in the car. If I'm not 
listening to music, I'm listening to an audiobook because I love to read, but I don't have time to read. I'm sure I can make time, but it's much easier driving in traffic and listening to a book because I'm basically doing two things at the same time. I'm driving and I'm reading. And yes, I know you're just waiting for it. Audible.com slash iJustine where you guys can get a 30 day free trial and a free audiobook. So you guys can choose anything that you'd like. And here are my two recommendations for the month. I do have these books in a physical form too because I like to support my friends. I get the audio version and I get the analog version so that I can also put these on my bookshelf. So the first book that we're gonna talk about is by Lizzie Velasquez. The best part about Audible is a lot of times the authors actually read the books. So in this book, Lizzie does read her book to you so you feel like you're listening to your best friend talk to you. If you guys don't know Lizzie, she's a YouTuber, an incredible motivational speaker. She's written several books. She's got an amazing documentary. She's toured the whole world telling her story and now in her book, she tells way more than she's ever told before. So being able to like hear her tell this story and really feel what she's feeling was amazing. I feel like this book should be recommended reading for parents and kids before you go to school because it talks so much about bullying and how to deal with bullies. And it also touches on a lot of more in-depth things that I wasn't even expecting. And even though that I knew these stories were going to be in this book, it was still kind of crazy to hear Lizzie tell the world for the first time some of the struggles that she had been going through that nobody had ever known. So Lizzie, I absolutely adore you and I love you and I hope that everyone does decide to listen to this book. This is crazy because Lizzie just texted me right now. She said, I had to contain myself from watching your camera videos because I want to buy everything you talk about. This is crazy. I'm legit making a video. How did she know? I'm sending her her picture. This is crazy. So check out Lizzie's book, Dare to be Kind. She also has an incredible documentary. I feel like I'm pretty much gonna talk about Lizzie this whole video because she's just such an amazing person. This book is called Best Seat in the House and I'm just gonna preface this by saying I don't know anything about wrestling. I don't know anything about WWE. I mean, my extent of knowledge of wrestling is Hulk Hogan and The Rock, and also John Cena, because I once bought a John Cena backpack at Walmart, so like, that's it. I met Justin fairly recently when I was in Pittsburgh for a Tool concert, and he was there doing the Tool VIP experience, and then he was heading off to go do a book signing, and I was like, oh, that's cool, what's your book about? So he had briefly given me a quick rundown of what it was about. This book is also read by Justin, and again, like I said, having the authors who are telling their own stories read their books is by far the coolest thing ever. So much like Lizzie's book that dealt a lot with bullying, Justin also dealt with so much of that in WWE, which so many people had no idea about. And clearly, me, I have absolutely no idea because I've never watched wrestling in my life. But the book was so awesome because it chronicled his entire life leading up to his dream job. And then when he got his dream job, the dream job that he thought that he really was in love with ended up turning out to be slightly a nightmare. What I loved so much about his book is you can clearly tell how passionate he was about wrestling and being able to take something that is your passion and turn it into your job. I have so much respect for anybody that can do that. And he did it for so long. Like the crazy travel schedules that these people have to go through to do WWE tours. Like I complain about getting stuck in the airport for like five hours, but yet imagine doing that for 12 years nonstop. That's crazy. I feel like if you're a wrestling fan, you're gonna absolutely love this book. And even if you're not, I know nothing. Half the time I was like, I'm not even sure who he's talking about. But it's the personal story and the personal connection to something that he absolutely loved and was able to make that dream come true that I felt super connected to and I feel like you guys will also absolutely love it as well. These are my two audible picks for this month. Justin Roberts, Best Seat in the House, and Lizzie Velasquez, Dare to be Kind. You can use my link, audible.com slash iJustine, so you can get a free book, 30 day free trial, and I think you guys will absolutely love Justin and Lizzie telling you their life stories. That's so, I'm still, I'm, ch I'm still chatting with Lizzie. Like, I can't believe it. This is so nuts, ah! The next question is X Free ZG. What do I like the most about playing Minecraft on PC or Nintendo Switch? The Nintendo Switch Minecraft is actually super cool. They've got a really awesome Mario mod, so you can kind of play in this Mario world. So I did just start playing the survival of that. But playing on a PC, it's where I started playing Minecraft. So you really do get that full sense of crafting because with the console versions, they kind of have all the recipes made for you already. So you just kind of like collect the stuff and then click what you want to make and then you can make it. So it's actually a little bit easier. I'm still contemplating starting a server. I miss it so much, we'll see. Maybe this fall when it's all across platforms, so no matter what you're on, you can still play on it. 
Am I gonna camp out for the next iPhone? Oh my god, I hope not. Man, camping out for that iPhone was the longest time of my life. I'd say a day, but it was over two days. Like 56, 7, 8, 58 hours. And I hope I never have to do that again. But would I do it again? Yeah, of course I would. You think I'm crazy? Yes. I am. Rulon's asking if I got all of my digital storage figured out, and no, I haven't yet. I think I may have a solution, and I'm extremely excited about it, so stay tuned. There may be a very fun collab happening with that, so shh. Cody wants to know, what do I do when I have a creative block? That's hard because I feel like I have an ongoing list of things that I wanna do and things I wanna make. So when I do have a creative block, I kinda go to that list and see what I wanna make. I'll also sometimes go back and watch some of my old videos because that will sometimes kinda stem some sort of creativity where I'm like, man, I remember when I was doing this and I wished that I could have done this, but either the technology wasn't there or I didn't have the money to do it or I didn't have access to a certain thing. So sometimes that helps helps me to kind of see where I was 10 years ago and remember, why did I start doing this? What was it that I wanted to do back then that I can potentially do now that I wasn't able to? I sometimes feel like there's too many things that I want to do and I just don't have the capacity to do it all. Well, I think that's all the questions I have. Let's see. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.